Okay, here we go. This all conic sections have a standard form that can be written as ax squared plus I, I said standard, I said the wrong word. It should be a general form that is ax squared plus by squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals zero. Whether I give you a circle in the x, a parabola, or a hyperbola, I want you to be able to identify. So you're going to look at this equation and go, well, I know this is not a circle because I don't have 1x squared and 1y squared. It is not a parabola because if it's a parabola, either a or b will be 0. And if a is 0, the x squared is totally gone. And if the b is 0, the y squared is totally gone. So you would only have one squared vari variable if it's going to be a parabola. If it's a hyperbola, one of these is going to be negative. So if you don't see a negative sign, and these are not both ones, this is an ellipse. In order to graph the ellipse, the first thing we've got to do is put it in standard form. So that's going to require completing the square. And so I'm going to rearrange these so that I have 9x squared minus 90x, and then 16y squared minus 96y, and then I have 225 equals 0. If you remember from when we completed the square long ago, we said the first thing you have to have is a leading coefficient of 1. So I need to factor out a common 9, and that will leave us x squared minus 10x. And we're going to have to add just the right thing in order to make this become a perfect square trinomial. <coughs> and then, this is a plus, I'll have, if I factor out a positive 16, that will leave me y squared minus 6y and I need to add just the right thing to make this become a perfect square trinomial also. Remembering what we've done completing the square numerous times, is 225 the number I need to put right here? Or here? 225 is not the number I need in either spot, so I'm going to subtract 225 and make it move to the other side. Here's where people mess up on this. We're about to add just the right thing right here, but whatever we do to one side, we must also do to the other side. Whatever I add here, I must also do on the other side. So tell me, from what you remember, what is the thing that we need to add right here? It's the square of the, or the, half, uh, the half of the middle. The square. The middle square. So what are we going to add? 25. Add 25. Okay, to add 25 here, as long as we also add 25 on the other side. But then you got to be careful because there's one more little wrinkle. We didn't just add 25, we added 25 inside of a parenthesis that is being multiplied by 9. So we really have to <coughs> add on the other side 25 times 9. And what, what are we going to add here to complete this one? Yeah. Half of the middle, half of the middle. Three squared times 16. Oh, okay, gotcha. Three squared is going to be 9. So when we add it to the other side, we have to add 9. And we have to remember this 9 was really in parentheses being multiplied by 16. So add 9 times 16. So now you've got to remember how to factor a perfect square trinomial. It factors as something squared. What is the something? Well, uh, negative 5. Not just negative 5. It's a binomial. Well, yeah, yeah. X minus 5 times X minus 5 will get us to here. Okay. And then 16 times something squared, what's the something? <coughs> so y this time, y minus 3 squared. Where do we land on the other side? Negative 225. Okay, so this is plus 225. This is 144. And the 225s go away. So on the right hand side, we just have 144. Is that standard form? Uh, has to equal 1. Oh, Standard yeah. form for an ellipse has to equal 1. Divide. Okay. divide every term on both sides by 144. 9 divided by 144. Reduce that fraction. 116. So I'm just going to write 1, and I'm going to leave an understood 1 right here, x minus 5 squared over 16. Do 16 divided by 144. Reduce that fraction. One ninth. So I'm going to call, I'm going to write, understood 1 times y minus 3 squared over 9. And over here equals 1. Put it in a box. 
This is the standard form equation for the ellipse. That is part of the discussion. You gotta have standard form because that makes it easier to graph. The next thing is, tell me about the center. You should be able to look at this equation and tell me the center. Zero, zero. Nope, it's not zero, zero. Oh. Because we, don't, we have, don't just have x squared, we have... X minus five. Which makes it shift which way? Up. Right. It's with the right x. Five. Opposite of what you think right in parentheses, five. right five, up three. Up three. Up three. So if your vertex is not zero, zero, if it's gone right five and up three, where is it? Five, three. Everything else will shift to follow the center. So the next thing is we need to identify for ellipses, a squared is the biggest denominator. So a squared equals 16. When we take the square root of both sides, a equals 4. What does a tell you? You've got to do some studying on this so that you'll know. It's a distance from center to vertex on the major axis. Well, we've got to decide which one's going to be the major axis. Because the biggest number is under the x, the other ellipse we did, the biggest number was under the y, and it stretched vertically. It stretched more in the y direction. But on this one, the biggest number is under the x, so that means it, it stretches more in the x direction. So the major axis is horizontal. So that means front, plot, plot our center. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. <coughs> and from the center, in the horizontal direction, we go a distance of four, one, two, three, four, and we find a vertex. If you're four farther out than five, then you're at nine, and you're still at a height of three. And then, a distance of four on the other side, one, two, three, four, that puts us at 1, 3. Those are the official vertices. <coughs> Label them on your graph, but then include them in your discussion. The vertices are 1, 3 and 9, 3. Put those in a box. Put the center in a box. Then we have to find the B points. The B points are sort of the unofficial vertices. And they come from, over here, if a squared was 16, then b squared is 9, so b equals 3, put it in a box. 3, then, is the distance from the center on the minor axis. We go a distance of 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Where does that put us? Still out 5, but up 0. And out five, but up three higher than the center, so five, six. The B points are at five, zero, and five, six. Put those in a box. If you go to your book and you look up ellipses, you're going to get a whole bunch of formulas. It doesn't do a whole lot of explaining what A, B, and C do. It tells you if you want to find... Um, if you wanted to find the, the center, it's always HK. You know that. If you wanted to find the vertices for an ellipse with this kind of a standard form, it would tell you you go out to the center plus a little bit more. It would tell you go out H plus A and up K. And then it would tell you go out to the center and then back up. So it would tell you H minus A, K. And you have this whole list of formulas on that section. If you wanted to find the B points, it'll tell you go out H and then go up K plus some more or go out H and up K and back down some. I don't think you're going to want to memorize all of these different formulas. So instead of having to memorize formulas, you've got to do some studying so that you know what A, B, and C do for you. C to calculate C, we're going to use C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So that means C squared equals our A squared was 16. 
and our b squared was 9. So c squared equals 7. And if you take the square root of both sides, c is exactly the square root of 7. For graphing purposes, um, we're going to call that about 2.6. So the focus points always are inside the ellipse. They're always going to be on the major axis. So this time, I start at the center, and I go a distance of approximately 1, 2.6. Uh -huh. I have a question. So to find the force half point, I guess, the C squared, you said sometimes I'll be plus B? When you do hyperbolas. On ellipses, it will always be C squared equals A squared minus b squared. Okay. When we do hyperbolas in a minute, the equation for c changes. Question, Kristen, Scott? Y'all okay? Oh, okay, don't talk because you're going to have a muddled voice on my video. Oh. That, so, I'll answer your question <laughs> if you have one now. Um, so, when you talk about these two focus points, to name them correctly, I really don't know from the center, I mean from the origin, from zero, zero, how far out I go to get there. So when you name the focus point, you always name them starting at the origin, get to the center first, and then go out another <laughs> C, another square root of 7. So this point right here, actually let me draw the, let me draw the ellipse. It should look like an ellipse, not a diamond. So the ellipse always goes through the vertices. And then the two focus points are inside of the ellipse. So just imagine when I drew the ellipse on the board by taking the string, these two focus points have to be on the inside. So to get here, I go out 5 plus another square root of 7, and then up 3. To get to this point, I'm not sure how far out that is, but I do know if I go all the way to the center, I'm at 5, and then I can back up the square root of 7. So this one is 5 minus the square root of 7, then up at the same height, up 3. In your discussion, you should have center in a box, vertices in a box, B points in a box, both side in a box. The both side labeled on your graph and in a box. So 5 minus the square root of 7 is 3, and 5 plus the square root of 7 is 3. Seven, three. And there you have it. We discuss the conic. Questions? Kristen, will you stop that?